Welcome back everybody to a new tutorial. Today we're going to go over the basics of Kismet and we have one ch uh, change for our code. So let's get right into it. First off, I opened up our gsgame.uc file and a colleague of mine suggested that instead of extending UDK game, we extend UT game. Since we are making a shooter, um, he suggested that perhaps using their code to do the, the back end work of you know killing pawns and scoring points and stuff like that would be better done and easier to explain if we use their stuff and we modded it. Which is true. It is easier to look at someone else's stuff and see how they did it to better understand how you should do it. So we're gonna go ahead and make that change. It's now UT game. And go ahead and save that. And you'll have to recompile of course using Unreal front end. And when you do, you'll get the same message here, you know you'll get recompile and that everything was successful. And once you do that, go ahead and open up your Unreal Editor and load up our level. Now this piece looks familiar, right? It's our little hallway. Ooh. Now what I've done is taken a 256 by 256 cube and cut a square out. Now I know you're saying this, isn't, this more, looks more like a rectangle than a cube, but trust me, the square is or the uh, hole is pretty square. And what I've done is placed a 2048 by 2048 platform using the cube tool, not the sheet tool, but the cube tool, because sheets don't really have a collision by default, so I went ahead and uh, did that so I could, could walk on it and added a light so we could see what we're doing. And then finally, I added a static mesh on here, and I did that by going into the content browser. Let me open that up, go to the building meshes, and it's this static mesh here the S underscore NEC underscore walls underscore small underscore CA wall underscore STR B. And I took two of them and put them side by side. So we have two static mesh act actors. Now, for the whole point of today's lesson, nine times out of ten, your level is going to need to do something. It can't just sit there and, and look pretty. I mean, a lot of the times you can get away with that if you're doing natural scenery, but even then, you know, there's rivers and trees falling and animals moving and things need to get done. So Unreal gave a great way to do this. It's called Kismet. And it's a very basic network of events it is pretty much what it boils down to. It is a network or a chained list of events. Now you get to your Unreal Kismet editor by going up here and next to the content browser there's a K. We're going to click on that. Now as you can see here I already got the, the Kismet in here so for those of you that are more advanced you can see this and just try it. And this here is just for our own purposes so we can see that we saw it or saw that it actually happened. Alright. What we're going to do now is we're going to add a trigger volume which I already have, it's this guy here. And to do that, all you have to do is take your builder brush, that you know square that you cut this hole out and made this platform with, and put it in front of these two static mesh actors. And by the way, I used a 256 all the way around. Go over to add volume, and then add a trigger volume, and it will show up wherever you placed the BSP brush. And then of course you'll move your builder brush out of the way and you'll be left with this nice green cube. And what you're going to want to do is highlight it, go inside Kismet, and do a right click. And as you can see, this context menu strip that pops up with every sequence that's currently compiled in the engine is nice to you and will default a few things. First, it will try to make a variable out of whatever you have selected, and it will also try to get you some sequences with whatever you have selected. In our case, touch and take damage. The one we're going to use is touch. So we place the touch here, and when you click on a sequence you can see that we have a few different properties we can mess with. The only one we really care about right now is the max trigger count. Let's make it zero. So as you can see, as you can see there, how many times can this event be activated? Zero for infinite. So we go ahead and make that zero so it never has to stop. And then we want it to be player only, that is true. Client side only, eh, not so much on this event. And none of the other stuff really matters. 
The only thing you may want to take into consideration is allowing dead pawns, but that's more or less up to you when you're making your games. Okay. So what we're going to do is we want to say when the trigger volume is touched, we want to do something, right? So we're going to right click, go to new action, go to actor, and we're going to change collision so we get one of these sequences popped up, as you can see here. And we're going to click on this black square, this anchor, and drag it to the input anchor of the change collision sequence. And you'll see that this black arrow has been drawn to that event. What that is saying is when this trigger volume is touched, it's going to do everything that is attached to that anchor. So it's going to log moved them to the screen. It's going to do this sequence, which is going to change the collision of these actors or these targets. And it's also going to call this one. Now, the final thing we have to do to get this properly synced up is get, of course, our object variables. These two guys are static mesh actors. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out of Unreal Kismet. And we're going to select both of these guys. So we have both static mesh actors selected. Go back into Kismet and right click. And like I said, whatever you is selected, they're going to try to make into a variable. So you'll click here and you'll get two variables, static mesh actor underscore zero and underscore one. You're going to click on this anchor and drag to these static mesh actor variables into the target zone. Finally, Let's click on the change collision and set the collision type to no collision. All right. Now what we're going to do after that, just so we can see some progress in our work, let's go ahead and copy this guy and bring him down here. And as you can see, Kismet's really nice to the users, very user friendly. It actually even kept our variables. Let's attach that to the untouched and bring that, and we're going to do that, and block all. So when we leave, it's going to harden back up. All right? So let's see here. Let's close out. And one final thing before we actually run this. Well, two things, actually. First, make sure that your trigger volume extends into the door a little bit. And actually, mine probably needs to go over one click. Just because when you leave that volume, it's instantly going to try to harden these. And if it does, you might get clipped in there, you might get killed. It all depends how, how much positioning you left between the door and the outside world. It may clip you, it may count as you getting stuck and just kill you off. All kinds of stuff. Alright. And then finally, before you save, go to Build and Lighting, since we have a new light. And you don't have to use Light Mask for this. Alright. And then file and save all, of course. Now let's see some progress. We're going to right click and play from here. And turn my volume down so you have to hear that. And as you can see right now, we shoot it. And it stops the stuff, right? We walk into it. We see our log posted. And now we can shoot through it. I cannot collide with it. And I can walk through it. And now that I'm out again, it's now hard. And see, I walked into it. It opened up again. That's because you left that little bit of space on the outside. That's why we needed it. All right, that's pretty simple, right? So uh, let's expand it. Next time, we're going to go over Unreal Matinee and get these things sliding open so we have a nice slider effect. So tune in next time, guys. This should be up in, uh, fairly shortly after this one, actually. So stay tuned.